morning again and welcome to another Sunday School. Uh, today is the third day of August, last Sunday in the month. And we're going to be talking about silencing of the Holy Spirit. You are silencing the Holy Spirit. We're going to try to figure out how we're doing it. How are we silencing the Holy Spirit? Our scripture lesson comes from Matthew 6.10, Isaiah 55.9. And our key voice says, do not quench the Holy Spirit. Take it from 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. So our first question is, why am I not hearing from the Holy Spirit? Why am I not hearing from the Holy Spirit? I think we all grapple with that all the time. We, 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 we come to pastor, to the deacons, say, you know, deacons, I've been trying. I've been praying. I just feel that I'm not hearing from the Lord. I'm not hearing the Holy Spirit. And you want you to bring the Holy Spirit down to your front door so you can have a conversation. But then you have to step back. Did you quench the Holy Spirit? Did you push him away? Did you avoid him? Did you reject the Holy Spirit? You see, last Sunday we talked about being sealed by Christ. And in that lesson we discussed we are being sealed by, the, by Christ through the Holy Spirit. He left the Holy Spirit with us as a mark of identification, as a guarantee that He is with us and that was, he, the Holy Spirit was going to protect us. So if the Holy Spirit is not in you and you're not hearing Him, you've silenced the Holy Spirit. So let's see how we can resolve that issue today. Let us have a word of prayer and we'll get started. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for another Sunday. We thank you, God, and give us the privilege to hear your word. We know that many of us, we don't think to quench your Holy Spirit that you left with us. But Lord, we pray that today we will learn how not to quench the Holy Spirit, but how to invite it into our lives. We thank you for those of our members and friends who are with us today, for the whole country, Lord. We pray for your mercy, we pray for your healing on this land. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. As we go through this lesson, Lord, open to help us to open our mind to learn a word or two that will take us through and bring our life one step closer to you. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are silencing the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Don't we all do that every day? We get up. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do the other. I am this. I can do that. I can do the other. And we feel we are all it. I can do it all by myself. Tyler Perry said I can do bad by myself or something like that. Yeah. And then when we go, we fail and fall flat on our faces. Then what we do? We look for scapegoats. We point finger. This person was not with me. My brother didn't have my back. My wife didn't have my back. My husband was not there. The children abandoned me. I was trying to do this. They didn't succeed because you didn't help me. The church didn't come to my rescue. And we have all the excuses but us. We have all the excuses but us. Then we say, oh, God didn't help me. That's the last place we go. The Lord was not with me at all. I don't know what have I done. But we have never stopped to ask the question, am I silencing the Holy Spirit? Am I kicking the Holy Spirit out of my life? Have we asked that question? So let's go and see how we do it. It is very simple. But there are several reasons. It could be that we don't understand how God speaks to us. And the reason why we don't understand how God speaks to us is because we're not coming to Sunday school. We're not coming to service. We're not reading His Word. We're not listening to Him. We're not sharing with our deacons, our pastor, what we don't understand so they can help to lead us the right way. So that's why we don't understand. The simple thing, if you're too proud, ask a question, then you will not be informed. If you cannot be proud, proud come before the downfall of any mighty man when you're too proud. The Lord warned us about that. So it will be that you sound the Holy Spirit because you don't understand how God speaks. It could be that you're not spending time with His Word, like I said. Or that you're in the hustle and bustle of life. That you have so many things going on, you cannot even discern God or respect God or recognize Him in your life. So obviously, 
He was following the Holy Spirit. Let's take an example. Your husband comes from work, or your wife comes from work, or you're in the home, you don't talk, no communication. You realize there is an artificial barrier. There will be a tension there. You want to say hello, nobody wants to talk. So you're not communicating. You're doing things on your own. Nothing is going right. So of course, as simple as that, if you cannot communicate with the Holy Spirit, if you cannot talk to God, you cannot be in a good relationship with Him, He will not be there for you. You have to allow Him into your life. You have to have the Holy Spirit present. We have to learn to listen to the Lord. How do we listen, Brother Charles? Is by spending time in His Word. Spending time in His Word, I cannot read and read that as many times as possible. We have to spend time with the Lord. We, we, we don't know it all. That's why we have to spend time with the Lord. The other things to do to quench the Holy Spirit, man, I don't even want to go down the list. We get so, so ahead because we've got this job, we're the director of this, this, this department, we did everything else, we got a, how got a six figure salary, we just bought a brand new half a million dollar home, we got a seven five dollar BMW S class, so we begin back. So we think we've done it all. But we forgot to know that the life and the breath that we breathe. There is a man who grant us the privilege. It's not because we deserve it. He grant us the privilege to breathe every day, to enable us to accomplish those things. So he just sit back and watch. He said what? If I knock and you hear my voice, you open your door, I will come in. If you don't open your door, forget it. I'm going to the next neighbor. Anybody who can hear me when I knock on your door, the door of your heart, and you welcome me in, I will come in and I will dwell with you there. So he has promised us all these things. But we as people, we think we can do it all on our own. And that's why many times we say you've quenched the Holy Spirit because we're not listening. We're not inviting him into our lives. So don't get me wrong. God loves all of us, please. Yes, you said, Brother Charles, but he said, we are his children. He made us his image and likeness. He promised us he was going to leave us from now to the end of time, everything else. Yes, but let me ask you, your children in the home, you love them to death. But when you misbehave, <laughs> you back off. And see what happens until they come back to you and apologize, Mommy, Daddy, I'm sorry I did wrong. Then you do other things for them, right? So what about Christ? So because your kids did something wrong and you can't them so you don't love them anymore, it has nothing to do with the love for your children. Our misbehavior in Christ has nothing to do with his love for us. He just backs up. That's all. He hasn't changed his promise towards us. He hasn't changed his love towards us. But we are the ones who strain away from his love. And he will watch you. And when you go and feel that our kids do, when we come back, he will receive us into his kingdom and we will fall on our face and confess our sins and say, Lord, I have sinned against you. Have mercy upon you. He will always welcome you back. Remember the story of the prodigal son. That's a vivid example. We know the story. What happened? So you cannot tell me that your child do something. Maybe he or she walks out of the room and says, I'm moving to my friends. I'm moving to grandma. I'm moving to granddaddy. And they go, it become rough or tough, and they can't handle it, they come back, and you say, no, you're not coming to my home. You say, well, first question would be, I thought you felt you was a man. That's the first question you ask them. I thought you felt you were a woman, right? Okay, bring up a hand, sit here. Now from this day forward, these are my rules. So when we silence the Holy Spirit, we will not hear from Christ. Anything we're going to do will be wrong. We will get the wrong results. We may think that we're succeeding initially, but it only lasts for a second. That so-called success will fall flat. They will say, oh, somebody did not like me. They gang up against me. They talked about me. They caused them to fire me from my job. They lied on me so I couldn't get this. Or I couldn't get a loan because I'm this. Or they don't like me, every other thing. No. Go to Christ. And of course, he has a seal on us. And that seal is the Holy Spirit. And as long as you are in that Holy Spirit and he's in you, what you're going to do, you will get through. It may not be always 100% perfect. I must always remind us. He did not promise us a what? A life full of gold and diamond. He said, yes, there will be some down days. There will be some rainy days. There will be some sunshine and some darkness, some storms in our lives. 
But all these things happen for us to continue to remain aware that there is good and evil. Because if Christ allows us to just go free and everything is perfect, trust me, you know how we will abuse it. We give the children in the house for freedom, say, watch television between 3 and 7, and they realize that, oh, by 7.30, you're in the room sleeping or you're resting. They watch television until 11 p.m. You know? So if he give us the, the attitude of everything being perfect, how will we abuse that? So sometimes there is a rain in our lives. So when the sun comes, we say, yes, something happened. So when things happen to us, we will step back and say, I know or I silent the Holy Spirit. So if you feel in your life today that you're not hearing from the Holy Spirit, don't blame anybody. Check yourself. Stare in the mirror. Look at yourself. Charles, what are you doing wrong? Charles, you did X, Y, Z. It was wrong. Step back. Look at yourself. Be honest to yourself. We talk about faithfulness. Be faithful to yourself. And ask the Lord to forgive you. And let the Holy Spirit come back into your life. Then you will see things changing. But again, I must remind you, it's not going to change magically. You're not going to flip the switch on the light on. Your life has changed dramatically. No, it doesn't happen like that. We must walk the road. Like they say in America, you must walk the walk and talk the talk. If you can't walk the walk, you can't talk the talk. So until you come back to the Holy Spirit and allow Him into your heart, into yourself, and begin to walk with Him, He will take you through the steps. You will have some bumps, but you will not fall. You will have some ups and downs. But you go through. He said, What? Yea, do I walk with you what? To the valley of the shadow of death. And what? You shall fear no evil. For what? David said, What? For I know God is with me. So we've got to be up with the Holy Spirit. We cannot continue insulting the Holy Spirit. We cannot continue making fake promises to the Holy Spirit. I will pray today. Every evening I'll pray at 4 o'clock. At 4 o'clock, we all will sit in front of the TV watching uh, uh, WWE. Rasly, right? And we forgot. Oh, shoot. I forgot to pray today, man. Okay, anyway, Lord, you know, tomorrow I will pray at 4 o'clock. Oh, really? Really? Then when you need the Holy Spirit, He should come up like your, at your beck and call? No way. No way. So let me remind us in as much as salvation is free, salvation is not cheap. We have to do something to get that salvation. So we should not go around thinking that because the, the Lord said he doesn't have to pay anything for salvation, so it's still free. No. We have to work towards it. You have to allow the Holy Spirit in your life. You have to communicate with the Holy Spirit so that he can talk to you. So we hear our old people, or people say, listen, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. They know what they're talking about. But young people who are watching and, and, and listening, I don't want you to think and go with the notion that only the older people can hear from the Holy Spirit. You don't have to be 50 years old, 60 years old, before you say, well, now I can deal with the Holy Spirit. From the day you were born and get to know yourself, you should start practicing and learning how to walk with the Holy Spirit because it is critical in your life. Sometimes we don't recognize it early enough. It's not about all our fault. But once you can be aware of yourself, take advantage of it. When you come to church, leave the social media phone. Stop talking to your friends. Stop walking all over the place. When pastor preaching, stop going to the Bible 50 times. Because by the time you go and come back, he may have had a word for you, but you missed that word. So we all should know that sometimes we can be in the right place or in the, at the wrong time, or we'll be in the wrong time, in the right place, and we'll miss our blessing. So, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, Paul tells the church, do not quench the Holy Spirit. Quenching the Holy Spirit, and what happens when we don't listen to the Holy Spirit? When we don't follow the direction of the Holy Spirit? When we do what we think we know, we follow the wrong crowd, we follow the wrong direction. Sometimes they give you the direction on a piece of paper, and you read the direction wrong, you make a mistake. So imagine, imagine the Holy Spirit as a fire, okay, and you take a bucket of water and waste it in the fireplace. What happens? If you live up north where it's winter time and your fire is your, your, your fire that right away is on your house to keep the house warm, somebody come and take a bucket of water and waste it in there, what happens next? 
The fire goes off, and the whole house becomes cold and freezing. You can't stay, you shake it. You get sick, you don't be careful sometimes, you die from the cold. So that's what can happen when you quench the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is like a fire in us. It keeps us alive. It keeps us focused. It keeps us transparent. It keeps us communicating with the Lord. And once we continue to do that, we'll be good. But we have a tendency of quenching the Holy Spirit, blocking it out of us. You say, well, I want to do this, but I don't want God to get back. So I'm going to do that. Really? Can you hide from the man who created you, who knew you before you were born in the womb of your mother, and you think you want to hide from him? You're not hiding from the deal, you're not hiding from the pastor. You're just fooling yourself. So let us come to the conviction that when we sin, we've quenched the Holy Spirit. When your kids do something wrong, they hurt you. You feel hurt. You tell them what you did, hurt me. Your husband, your wife, your brother, your sisters. When they do something to you, you feel hurt. And when you feel hurt, sometimes you distance from there a little bit. That's how when we quench the Holy Spirit, he backs off. Because he don't want to be disappointed, but he still gives us a chance. So do not grieve the Holy Spirit, please, brothers and sisters. Because the Holy Spirit is our seal that God placed on us. He is the one that Christ left with us when he was leaving this face of the earth. He entrusted us to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is doing his one million and one percent to carry on his instruction from the Father who sent him. But we have to allow him to work in our life. We need to get rid of bitterness in ourselves. Get rid of bitterness in the church. Get rid of hatred. Get rid of all these bad thoughts and mindset and gossip and lies about each other. When we do these things amongst each other, we grieve the Holy Spirit. Because we're supposed to be Christians, brothers and sisters. If the Holy Spirit is in Brother John, in Brother Jackson, in Brother Charles, and I grieve Brother Jackson, I make him feel bad, I've offended the Holy Spirit in him too. Because if the Holy Spirit is in me, and I'm offending him too. So we need to be careful how we do things because little things can cause us to grieve the Holy Spirit. Get rid of bitterness, rage, anger. You know, get rid of all these petty things. Oh, because you didn't come to my wedding last year, so your uncle died, I ain't coming to your funeral. What is that? What is that? Those are petty things. That shows how little you are. But if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will always learn to forgive. And trust me, when the Holy Spirit is working in you and active in you, look, you don't have to be Bill Gates to own all the money in the world. You will be happy. And I know a lot of millionaires who have all the money, but they're still not happy today. Trust me. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other. Whatever we do, let us learn to forgive. Because we also want to be forgiven when we do wrong. Be kind. Let's forgive one another. Because Christ what? Christ also forgave us. So we grieve the Holy Spirit. It means that we cause the Holy Spirit to grieve, to be sad. When we live in sin, when we live the way we want to live, day after day, that the way we were living before we got to know God, we make Him sad. We push Him away from us. We push Him away from all the goodness God has in store for us. So if we cannot accomplish those things that we try to accomplish or that we plan to do and we see we are failing, check yourself again. Go to the mirror. Am I grieving the Holy Spirit? Because I know He should be here with me, protecting me and guiding me. Why am I struggling like this? Ask yourself, what are you doing to the Holy Spirit? He should be there to, to be able to guide you, protect you, and help you communicate with the Lord. Don't be selfish. Don't be evil. Don't be petty. Most of all, have faith. Talk to the Lord. Read the scripture. Communicate. If you're having problems, I will always tell you, we have wonderful deacons at Grand Hill. Our pastors are all here. They never said to anybody that you cannot pick up the phone and call them. None of them have said that to you. Pick up the phone. Deacon pastor, I'm having this problem. You do not know it all. The deacon, the pastors, they will go to the scriptures. Everything we do have a reference in the scripture that can help us walk through that problem. They will guide you. They will pray with you. They will lead you. They will counsel you. If we continue to do these things together as a team, trust me, there is nothing we want to do that we cannot do. So let us have these two questions answered today as we close. When you pray, do you listen for the Holy Spirit also? 
Or do you just go and pray, Father, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Amen, I'm gone. Is that how you pray? When you pray, do you listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit? Do you spend time, four, five minutes, just sit there and just be quiet and just meditate? And hear what can happen. When you pray, just get up and walk and go. So, you're not ready to pray. You're not praying because that's a normal thing to do. You know, you also have to pray, so let me go pray. All right, I'm just going to go to God. Please can me save me. Amen. Bye. Really? Okay. The next question is, do we overlook the voice of the Holy Spirit and follow our own mind? Are we all not guilty of it? How many times we've overlooked the voice of the Holy Spirit and we follow our own mind? Then we come back and say, wow. You know, man, I should not have done that. I thought about it. Something told me not to do it. And man, I should have listened. But it's late. It's done with. I use myself as an example. Whenever I want to do something major in life, and I even major I want to do something serious, when I begin to argue in my mind with my very self about that action, I should not do it. If every time I go to do it, it has never failed me, whenever I argue in my mind, about something I want to do and I do it, it will fail. I will not succeed. That's, that situation has never gone wrong in my life. And that's how kind of I observe the pattern in my life. So when I'm about to do something, if I have no quarrel, I will hear the voice and it will give me some directions. When I begin to argue, I take one day, two days, hesitating, thinking what I should do it, I may as well forget it. If I attempt to do it, it's going to fall flat. So have you ever Overlook the voice of the Holy Spirit? If yes, it is not too late. There's a way we can get you to understand the voice of the Holy Spirit. Speak to the leaders of the church, and you will have the way to learn and know the Lord and study the word. God bless you. Thank you. Have a great rest of your week. We pray to go back to Grand Hill soon. Bye bye.
all things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. I would like for you this morning to ask yourself this question. Am I human or am I a new creature? Now before we get into the word of God, uh, let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we just pause just to show reverence to who you are. Lord, you are the kings of kings and the Lord of lords. Truly, nothing can be done without you, but everything can be done through you. And Lord, we just ask right now that you just add a blessing to the reading of your word, to the people who are truly listening and truly going to in, endure this word and, and use it to their daily lives, Lord. But we thank you for every ear that is listening. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now as I begin, we must first understand that uh, every time a so-called Christian uh, do something that is ungodly, our number one excuse that we use is, uh, well, I am human. Uh-huh. Y'all know that is what we say, huh? Well, according to 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, starting at the 17th verse, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh-huh, he is a new creature, uh-huh. It says if any man, that's any person, uh-huh, be in Christ. See, that, that, that in Christ is something important, uh-huh. That's something that we need. To know, but let's get back to what I initially stated. Uh -huh. I started off by saying uh, every time a so called Christian uh -huh, church, we have a problem. And it's not just a problem in the church, but it's a problem in the world that we live in today. Uh -huh. We have what we call an ID problem. We have an identity problem. People do not know who they are, what they are, and where they are. Uh huh. I think I need to say that one more time. People do not know who they are, what they are, and where they are. We have an identity crisis. But now don't go look surprised. Mm -hmm. Some of those same people who have a problem with their identity had a problem with wearing their IDs back in the days. You know, when you were in school, you got to put on your IDs and some folks had a problem with that. Uh huh. But some of those same people who had a problem with wearing their IDs back then still have a problem with wearing their IDs today. I mean, even on their jobs, they have a problem with wearing their IDs. So I had to ask myself, why these people have a problem with wearing their IDs? Well, for starters, uh, maybe they dislike their picture. Now somebody pray with me. You know, accepting your skin color is still a problem for some people yet still today. Uh huh. Believing that you are not attractive is still a problem for some people yet still today. Uh huh. Do not be ashamed of your ID. Having self-esteem is very important. You have to love yourself in spite of what others think of you. Because see, I know that I'm the tallest, finest man east of the Mississippi River. Now somebody out there probably saying, come on now, Minister Johnson. You are the opposite of everything you just said. Mm -hmm. And that may be true. Uh -huh. But see, I love my short, black, handsome self. You don't have to tell me about me. I love me to me, uh-huh, and God made me, and by the way, he made me 
fearfully and wonderfully. Uh -huh. When I look at myself, I say, uh, wonderful are your works, O oh God. Uh -huh. And my soul knows it very well. Uh -huh. See, I graduated from the thoughts of people. I don't care about what you think of me. I know what God say I am. I am a child of the most high God. I have self-esteem, baby. I know who I am and whose I am. Uh-huh. But people, people have a problem with wearing their IDs. They have a problem with wearing their IDs because, uh, Maybe they don't want to be classified in a certain grade or a certain area. You know, uh, I don't want people to know my occupation. I am ashamed of my job. I, I don't want people to know that I, I'm living in a particular neighborhood. I don't want them to think less of me or not show me the respect I believe I deserve. Well, if people judge you based on your occupation, if people judge you based on where you live and not the fact that you are a whole person, uh, then you should not worry about what that person think or feel about you anyway. Be proud of where you live and what you do. Uh-huh. Watch this now. Martin Luther King said this. He said, uh, be the best in whatever you do. If a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted, or Beethoven played music, or Shakespeare wrote poetry. All that matters is that you are in the land of the living and God still sits on the throne. But people, People have a problem with wearing their IDs. Uh -huh. They have a problem with wearing their IDs because uh, maybe they just want to be rebellious or incognito. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't want people to understand me. I, I want to be different. Uh, I don't want them to accept what I am. I, I love it when people frown at me. See, I like that kind of uh, tension. Now, I hope I'm not talking to anybody that's listening, but uh, because you do know that uh, Satan was an attention seeker. Even some church folks are attention seekers. Seekers, um, when you have the light, you don't have to seek attention. You will automatically get attention. When you walk outside and it's dark or it's at night, you will notice all the lights that are present. But then there's always this light that is flickering. And that light that is flickering will draw your attention to it. It has a little piece of light, but it also shimmers to dark. But what is going on with that light? What's going on is that that, that light is dying. Or that light is having trouble staying connected to the source. So it's screaming for help. I hope I'm not talking to anybody out there. But you don't have to seek attention. Just shine consistently and let the Lord continue to guide you. But it comes down to this question because that flickering light, that, that ones that shimmer and dimmers, that one that have a problem staying connected, normally has a problem with their true relationship with God. Uh, do you truly believe in God? Or is your relationship 
just contingent upon you seeking more attention. But church, we have an identity problem. We have an identity problem because uh, people do not know uh, who they are. Uh -huh. Most people these days don't even know their family members. In fact, you might know their family members before they do. You might walk up to somebody and be like, Johnny, you, 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 you know who Eddie is? And if it ain't their first cousin, you, you can almost bet they don't know these days. That's how mixed up and how far off we done got. But people don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. But church, we have an identity problem. People do not know uh, what they are. Uh -huh. Even if they are looking in the mirror at themselves, uh, they still think that they are something that they are not. Now, you know, these days you got to be careful about what you say. But see, I work for the Lord, and I'm going to say what thus says the Lord. I know that in your younger days you might have had a traumatic experience. But that was not God. That was the evil that was within a person who committed that awful act. But you still have to be what God made you. Now if you hate me for stepping on your toes, that's fine. But I love you and I'm here to tell you the truth. Be what God made you. Love yourself. Self-hate is a big sin. And disguising it with false love will not fix it. Love what God made you. If you're a boy, be a boy. If you're a girl, be a girl. Now, I'm going to leave that one right there because I might run for office in the future. I don't need no misunderstandings. But if you love me for telling you the truth, well, I can live with that one. But people don't know what they are. But last but not least, church, we have an identity problem. People do not know where they are. Uh -huh. People these days have no sense of directions. Uh -huh. People these days don't know how to act. Uh -huh. And people these days either living above or below their means. Uh, but we have what we call an identity problem. Uh -huh. But let me get back to the top. Uh, let me get back to what I initially stated in my sermon. Uh, I said in the beginning that uh, every time a so-called Christian, uh -huh, do something that is ungodly, our number one excuse that we use is, well, I am human. Now it's time for me to preach. Please give me your attention. I said, uh, every time a so-called Christian, far too often we use that word Christian too loosely. Uh -huh. Everybody claims to be a Christian, but are you really a Christian? Uh huh. I mean, I hear what you say you are, uh -huh. for even Jesus said these people, they, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. I mean, are you a Christian? Uh -huh. Are you really about that life? Uh, that's what the young folks would say. Are you really about that life? Are you real or are you fake? Uh, in the game where they say, are you claiming or are you false claiming? Are you really a Christian? Now somebody is probably asking, well, Minister Johnson, well, what is a Christian? I, I think I'm a Christian, but I'm, I'm not sure what a Christian truly is. Uh -huh. Well, let me tell you what a Christian is. A, a Christian is a person who believes in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Now, in order to be a Christian, you have to believe in Jesus Christ. That is first and foremost, but a Christian is also a person who exemplifies the teachings of Jesus the Christ. Are you a person who exemplifies the teachings of Jesus the Christ? Are you a Christian? Are you claiming or are you false claiming? 
Corinthians 5th chapter 17 verse says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh -huh, what did Paul and Timothy mean by be in Christ? Uh, in Christ. Uh, what does that mean to be in Christ? Uh -huh. For starters, uh, Philippians 2nd chapter, the 5th verse says, Let this mind that be in Christ Jesus also be in you. Uh huh. The ERV says, uh, in your life together, think the way Christ Jesus thought. Uh huh. But Philippians, the second chapter, verse 6, says something so profound. Uh, verse 6 says that uh, he was like God in every way. If we call ourselves Christians, uh, which also means Christ like, uh -huh, then we too must be like God in every way. Mm. Now I know we can never be God. Uh-huh. Hear me clear. I know we can never be God, but we can be God lead. Oh, help me somebody. Uh-huh. I just love it when people say, Minister Johnson, who you think you is? You think you God? I'd be so happy to respond, no, I'm not him. But I'm glad that you can see him in there. Help me somebody. Uh-huh. Because as a Christian, uh, they should see God in you and on you. Uh-huh. As a Christian, you know who you are, what you are, and where you are going. Oh, help me out somebody. Uh-huh. But I'm still trying to figure out what does it mean to be in Christ. Uh-huh. Second Corinthians 5th chapter in the 21st verse says, uh, for our sake, he was made to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Uh -huh. Tell yourself you have to become righteous. Oh, help me out somebody. Mm -hmm. You have to do the right things. Uh -huh. But church, I'm still trying to figure out uh, what is it to be in Christ. Uh -huh. Romans the 8th chapter, uh, the 38th and 39th verse, and the ESV has it. It says, For I am sure that neither death nor life, uh -huh, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate me from my love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm. Nothing can separate me from my love for God. Nothing should be able to separate you from your love for God. Uh -huh. I'm in love with Christ Jesus, but church, I'm still trying to figure out uh, what is it to be in Christ. Mm. Galatians, the Third chapter, verse 26 says, For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. Oh, help me out somebody, huh? You cannot have faith without believing, uh huh? Well, what is it to believe in Christ Jesus? Uh, remember, uh, to be a Christian uh, is a person who believes in Jesus Christ, uh huh? And exemplifies the teachings in their lives. Uh -huh. Well, if you believe in Christ Jesus, uh, then you will take him at his word. Uh -huh. Even Jesus says in John 14, he says, uh, truly, truly, I say to you, uh -huh, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. Uh -huh. And greater works than these will he do uh, because I am going to the Father. Oh, help me out somebody. Jesus later says in verse 15, uh, he says, if you love me, uh, you will keep my commandments. Uh, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. Uh, I hope I'm not talking to anybody who's listening. Mm. I don't want to call you the world. I hope you don't have a hard time accepting the truth. Uh, oh, help me out somebody, huh? But you know him, it says, uh, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Uh -huh. Jesus says in verse 21 of John's gospel, he says, uh, uh, 
Whoever has my commandments and uh, keep them, uh, he is it who loves me. This ain't Paul, this ain't Matthew, this ain't John, this ain't Luke. This is God himself saying, uh, he who keeps my commandments, it is he who loves me. Uh -huh. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Uh, if you want to receive the help uh, from the Lord, then you got to love him first. Oh, help me out, somebody. See, I always say we can pimp each other, but we cannot pimp God. He knows who loves him. Huh? God knows your heart. Uh -huh. But am I human? Or am I a new creature? And I'm almost home, people. Every time a so-called Christian uh -huh, do something that is un- Godly, our number one excuse that we use is, well, I am human. Well, I have a question. What is a human? A human is a bipedal primate mammal. Let me say that one more time. A, a human is a bipedal primate mammal. Uh -huh. Bipedal, that's a two-footed animal, uh-huh, primate, that is an ape or a monkey, uh-huh, and mammal, uh, and mammal, that is a, a animal. Uh -huh. If you are a human, uh, you are saying that you are an animal. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to think that I'm more than just an animal. I like to think that I am a spiritual being having an earthly experience. Uh -huh. I am not just natural, but I am a supernatural. See, I'm different. Huh? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm different. Huh? Watch what Roman 8 says. It says, uh, There is, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, uh huh. For the law of the spirit of life uh, has set you free in uh, Christ Jesus uh, from the law of sin and death. Uh, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. Uh huh. By his own son, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, uh, and for sin he condemned sin in the the flesh in order that his righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Uh -huh. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. Uh -huh. But those who live according to the spirit uh, set their minds on things of the spirit. Uh -huh. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, uh, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Uh -huh. Verse 7 says, for the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. Sounds like an animal. Mm -hmm. Watch this now. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. But those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you, talking to the real Christians, uh -huh, you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Uh -huh. Please, people, don't get mad at me. I'm just the messenger. Uh -huh. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life, oh, the spirit of life because of the righteousness, if the spirit of him who is raised by Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raises Christ Jesus from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies. Uh, that's your earthly body. Uh -huh, through the spirit who dwells in you. I am more than just a human. 
I am a super human. Because the one who is superior, he lives in me. Huh? I am more than just an animal. Huh? I believe they say that animals belong in the wild or they belong in cages. Oh, help me out, somebody. Because, see, I'm spirit-led. Huh? I will walk in my freedom. Uh -huh. You cannot catch me or hold me down. Uh, watch this now. People will always try to get you to act like an animal. Huh? They will always try to get you to lose control. Huh? People can say and try to do whatever they want to do, but I'm reminded that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Go ahead and tell me what I used to be. Uh -huh. Go ahead and tell me uh, how I used to act. Uh -huh. Tell me all the places I used to go. Tell me all the things that I used to do and I won't deny it. Huh? I was a rider huh? and you didn't want to mess with me. Huh? But now I am in Christ. Uh -huh. Second Corinthians said, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh -huh. All things have passed away and behold all things are new. Uh -huh. Therefore if any man and be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh -huh. Even God did not put you in a category. He just said a new creature. Oh, help me out somebody. Uh -huh. See, God didn't put you in a box. So what makes you think that people will put can put you in a, a box? Uh-huh. Because see, I'm, I'm not an animal. Uh-huh. In other words, uh, people cannot figure you out, uh-huh. Why can't they figure you out, uh-huh? Because First Peter says that you are a chosen generation, uh, a royal priesthood, uh, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That word peculiar, that means strange, weird, uh-huh, different. Yeah, I, I'm different. Oh, I'm watching now, uh-huh. But see, let me backtrack just for a quick second. Talk about animals. See, animals, they love to move around in the dark. And the reason why they move around in the dark is because they're trying to survive and they're trying to hide themselves from the predator. But see, one thing about the dark is that uh, it also gives cover to the enemy. In other words, uh, as long as people are ignorant, uh, some people can still take advantage of you. But when you are in Christ, we love to walk in the light. Because in the light, uh, you can sit still. When you are in Christ Jesus, uh, we love to walk out in the open. Somebody say, ain't nothing to hide. Uh -huh. We got the light. Huh? We'll walk in the light. So we're not worried about any enemy creeping up on us. Uh -huh. Because we have the light, we can see the enemy off in the distance. Oh, help me out somebody. Uh -huh. But that's what happens when you walk in the light. Huh? Your vision will become a lot broader. But the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become as new. Huh? People will always try to remind you of what you were, who you were, and how things used to be. We call that talk the good old days. And we can still have that conversation about the good old days. But since I'm walking in this newness, uh, we can have a new conversation about the good new days to come. Oh, help me out somebody. Uh -huh. I thought that I was having fun back then, but I'm really having fun now by being in Christ Jesus. Uh, Classic Gospel Choir said that I'm a new me. Uh -huh. I don't do what I used to do. I'm a new me. I don't think the way that I used to think. I'm a new me because Christ has made the change. I'm telling you people, give precedence to God's word. Let God's word rule over you. Let him be the Lord 
of your life. I remember the song that Tina Turner wrote. She said, make me over. Now if you go back and listen to those lyrics, realize who she was talking about. She was talking about the kings of kings and the lord of lords. She knew that she needed Jesus to make her own. Help me out somebody. Little piece of that verse said, I, I want the eternal beauty, those spiritual things, because when I'm done, yes, Lord, I want to be a good thing. Hey, Lord, make me over. Hey, Lord, make me over. God has made me over. I am no longer just a human. I'm a superhuman, a supernatural being having an earthly experience. I'm a superman. I was built for the war, fighting the enemy at every angle, fighting every enemy that exalts itself upon the, above the knowledge of Christ Jesus. I'm maintaining and I'm keeping my joy and my peace and my freedom. How am I doing that? By allowing the word of God to rule over my life. We're talking about an unspeakable joy. We're talking about a joy you can't shake. We're talking about when, whenever you go through storms of life, it doesn't even feel like a storm because you're resting in the eye of the storm. We're talking about a peace that you can't understand yourself. Why am I not upset? Why am I not worried? Because I know if I love God, and God is a man and he cannot lie, if I love God, uh-huh, he said that all things work together for the good of those who love him and call according to his purpose. That's why I'm not worried. Because I know that I love the Lord. Doesn't matter what's going on out here in the world today. These things were written a long time ago that these things would have come. So ain't no need to panic. Ain't no need to live in fear. You do your duty that is best. Of course, you got to apply your everyday knowledge, but don't worry about it. God got you. If you one of his, if you claim to be a Christian, then we all need to see it. Time's out for falling short saying, oh, I'm just human. Well, I'm not just a human. I'm a new creature. Press forward and push on. Do what does says the Lord and watch his glory rescue you every time you turn around. Y'all just pray my strength in the Lord.